uh, your, your statement you'd like about what, five minutes? Yes, if you give me five yeah, minutes, okay. I'll do my best. Yes, okay. <coughs> you may go ahead. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson, and uh, thanks for your consideration also for affording me the period to mourn. And uh, finally, I have presented myself before the Commission, and I promise to continue cooperating with your good self. Chairperson, just as a, as a, as a, as a precursor to, to the affidavit I've submitted, I just want to put it on record that for the better part of my life, since the age of 15, I have been part of many South Africans who have availed themselves to be directly active in fighting, in suffering and sacrificing for a non-racial and non-sexist and a united democratic South Africa. Throughout until today, here in this particular commission, I have come knowing very well, Chair, that it is still part of that journey I have made a commitment towards of paying the price for my commitment and determination to fight any injustice against me, my comrades, family, and all other South Africans. The submissions that has led to me being here today, I find them extremely defamatory. I find them full of contradictions by someone who has had ample time and opportunity afforded to him exclusively. I find that they smack of hatred. I find that they are very insensitive. I find that they seem to be an act of excessive desperation for the reasons that are better known by Mr. Agrizi to discredit me, destroy the little of what remains of my character, my family and myself in particular. The assertions that have been made of my political influence of the president, as it is stated in his affidavit, also shows the naivety and ignorance that he himself, Mr. Akritsi, has on how the NC functions, together with his witnesses, and it goes as far as to say in page 467, paragraph 10, that I have even gone to an extent of having a serious influence on President Comrade Tabombeki. They've fallen short, Chairperson, of even saying I had influence of Comrade, on Comrade President Nelson Mandela. The above assertions indicate that both him, Mr. Akriti, and his allies do not understand nor know the ANC, nor even know me as a person. I belong, Chair, and I'm a member of the African National Congress. I have and I enjoy full democratic rights within the ANC including the choice of a leader I prefer. At no point, Chair, have I never been loyal nor supportive of any leader democratically elected, even in instances where I have directly contested a position and lost. I would embrace the outcomes and rally behind the elected leadership executive and even execu execute the mandate of that particular outcome. But I have also been, notwithstanding that, being a victim of those who had come with the notion of the 1996 class project in the scheme of politics. I have received dismissal letters dismissing me from the Central Committee of the South African Communist Party because of my loyalty to the movement and the leadership of the African National Congress. I've contested the current Treasurer General of the ANC for the position of a Gauteng chairperson. Yet even then, our families, our personal relationships have remained so close to each other such that he remains a family friend, a brother, and, and more in particular an uncle to our kids, the same with me and his family. We went to Nazareth, Chairperson, in 2017. It is a known fact that my preference was on Comrade Nkosaza Nadlamini Zuma, the current Minister of Court. I was even then part of a collective on behalf of the National Executive Committee of the NC that ran this conference properly, yet I was accused by some in the media for intending to collapse the conference, for having called for a recount and many other accusations. Even then, Chairperson, the conference ran and concluded its agenda, and immediately thereafter, we all had to rally behind the leadership collective and all the outcomes of the conference. When we moved to East London post Nazareth, because the conference was in December, in January when we went to celebrate the anniversary of the ANC in 2018, 
I was amongst those, and there are those social media clips that, dem that show Nomvula Mukonyani publicly announcing in front of the media that delegates have spoken, the slates were broken in Nazarek, and we have to move on with the agenda as mandated by conference under the leadership of the current president of the NC, Comrade Cyril Ramaphosa. As for President Zuma, it is a known fact that I supported Comrade President Zuma against Comrade President Tabombeki strongly on my belief that he couldn't have more than two terms, as well as on my policy preferences and the, and the choice I have made. I've served chair and led under, the, under Comrade President Zuma, including being part of his cabinet. I have never acted in the criminal justice system cluster. I've never been appointed in any of those positions. I've only served as a minister of water, and then post Nazrek, I was moved from water, taken to communication, then moved from communication, taken to environmental affairs, and then post the elections, I opted not to go back to parliament. I was part of the collective going to Mangawung chair that supported Comrade President Zuma for second term. And for that, I also supported Comrade President Mutante, who amongst others, he preferred himself to be a contestant against President Zuma when I preferred him with many other members and structures of the NC as the deputy president to Comrade President Zuma. Upon Comrade Mutante declining the deputy president position, I was personally amongst many ANC members who then opted to bring the current president, Comrade Cyril Ramaphosa, to be the deputy president against former treasurer general of the African National Congress, who, by the way, left us at that conference, and we had to be saved by many other people who are accused of being corrupt and have captured the state, and those were the people who saved us from the Mangawun conference, and the conference ran smoothly, and President Zuma and, President, and Deputy President then, Ramaphosa, were elected. I did this all as a loyal member of the ANC, understanding the duties of a member, including the Constitution. On my personal attack and vilification chair, I take serious exception, find it insensitive for Mr. Agritzi to claim that they paid the cost for the burial of my son and my family. He even confuses the names, even the, 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 my own sons, as to who has passed on and who has had a drug problem, precisely because he has other ulterior motives of which I do not know. My family, like many others, including yourselves and many others, both black and white, do receive condolences during bereavements. But we all know, Chair, that to claim that Busasa buried my son and family is so hating, derogatory, and insensitive of Mr. Akriti. In any of my bereavements, we uphold our pride and cultural practices. And one of those is that we bury our own. We take responsibility of what are the burial costs, we take full responsibility in line with our customs and traditions. I'm married to Basutu, proudly, proudly Basutu, who are Bakwena, who have their own culture. I'm born in Kiza, we have our own culture at home, and we have our own rituals that we, 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 we prefer. And therefore, we can't go and have a stranger bearing our own because we don't want to be followed up by other things that we have to sort out post the burial. I think the chair understands better what I'm saying. Where people, and we know that where people come, chairperson, and make contributions, it will be as it is done in other families, including in other religions. Some people offer condolences in different forms, some not even known by the immediate family. And in the instances that Mr. Agrizi is referring to, I have been the chief mourner. And in our own tradition, in our culture, I am confined to the bedroom with the mattress pulled down, and myself just interacting with the only people that I can tell you, Chair, who I have never been their supporter, but they have become my own family, is Orlando Pirates. The Orlando Pirates choir will forever, during my bereavements, come, and yet they know I'm an ardent supporter of Kaiser Chiefs. Even when Bobby Mutawung said this is their family business, I, I am still a fan of Kaiser Chiefs, but my home, is with Orlando Pirates because Sis Mantua, Praevin Koza, I see them as my own brothers. I call him Krotman. I call Sis Mantua Ausmantua 
precisely because of my marriage to Basutu. Of, out of all this, I so wish, Chair, that even one day, when death has struck on Mr. Agris's family, no one must use his pain to try and discredit or seek to destroy him. It is un-African, it's inhumane, it lacks Ubuntu. Because Mark Shoniwe, people do come, Baleti Amakandela, Baleti Zantla, Baleti Oksizwayo, and some of the things that he's referring to are things that I really think they actually bother on undermining and trying to destroy the little of my character that I have built. With regard to the food donated by Busas, just as this is happening now, Chair, just now, under lockdown, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of businesses and individuals who go all out to share with communities. But Busasa was no exception, and it continues to be no exception. I'm still involved in charity work, not even being in parliament, not being a public representative. As we speak now, kids in Kahiso 1 will be fed through the initiatives and the support that business has extended to make sure that those who normally depend on the food that they find they get served at school are now actually given something to live and survive now that schools, that now that they have not gone back to school. And also, Chair, I can also indicate that not only has Busasa worked or supported the community of Kahiso, it has gone as far as Orange Farm, it has done a lot of work in Limpopo, in the rural areas, it has worked in Port Elizabeth, and here they found me as one of the public representatives, one of the activists of Kahiso, a child of Kahiso, a child of Manseville, that we should work together and make sure that when they donate these things, we are there. And they have served and they've done those things. They've even given an opportunity to people who would not have had an, a, a Christmas celebration, a chance to have a Merry Christmas. There was a moment when parents and communities chair in Gauteng, and I think all of us will remember because it was out in the media, when all of us were overwhelmed and desperate because of the drug abuse in this province. Outside of my responsibility as a public representative, but as an affected parent, Chair, together with community leaders, parents, and I want to state it, Orlando Pirates, which I don't even support even today, came forward, worked on a program that went out to assist kids. We picked up kids lying in Villegas Street. We picked up kids in Deep Kloof. We picked up kids in Kahiso. And because of this social mobilization, we had a crisis in El Dorado Park that everybody knows, where I met many of the anti-drug activists. We worked together, and all these people came forward. And in this partnership, it was not only Busasa, there were other institutions that also came to partner with the communities. And in this, in this instance, Busasa again offered to lend a hand in assisting to fight this scourge of substance abuse. They offered services voluntarily, not to my child only, not to me, but to the communities that had come forward. And young people who were willing to be assisted volunteered themselves and, and admitted themselves into the services of, uh, of Busasa. Not, and it then went beyond Gauteng. It even went to the Western Cape. It went to Limpopo. It went to the, to the, north, to the Northwest as well. On security matters, Chair. Shepherdson, my life and that of my family has been always under threat from as far back as in the 80s. We have survived bombings. We have survived kidnappings. We have survived torture. We have survived shootings. We have survived poisoning. Not one, but many a times. Even when I was 11 days married and two months pregnant, we thought we were going into a special honeymoon only to find that we're going to section 20, 29 and we're then kept in isolation together with my late husband, Serge Mokonyan. At the time when I was even the premier chair, never mind those times in the 80s, and unfortunately even with the 80s, 
the Truth Commission, and I think it was amongst other venues using this kind of facility, has never come out until today. Nobody, including a district sergeant who colluded with the security branch to say I'm not pregnant, trying to abort me forcefully, never came forward to apologize. Even today, nobody has come out to say who bombed our homes more than once. Nobody has come forward to say who actually wanted to jump the fence and the gate in Bapong Street where I used to live in 1085 and that out of the security advice of the NC, we had to move away from that area because there was illegal electricity connection and our house sometime got dark because of illegal connection only to find that there was also a plan to keep our house dark. We had to move to Silverfields, not to Kenme, as Mr. Akriti and his witnesses refer. I've never lived in Kenme. I've lived in Kahiso. I got married, I lived in Manseville. I moved to Kahiso. I then lived with my family in Silverfields, and then we are now in North Devil. Again, a demonstration that they don't know me. They seem to be fudging and trying to find everything to just deal with the little of the character that I have built for myself. At a time when I was the Premier Chair, I was faced with a house breaking whilst I was asleep inside the official residence in Brighton. That residence had cameras on. That residence had static South African police services officers on duty. And strangely, on that day, they alleged that they knocked off at 2 in the morning. People got into the house. They took all the electronic appliances. Fortunately, I locked the door when I'm asleep. And they left with no one having found them. To date, nobody, including members of the SAPS who were on duty that time, for static duty, have ever faced any hearing, just a simple hearing, or a disciplinary case, nothing has happened. But let's leave that, Chair. Now, when I was the minister, I was sent to go and work in the Eastern Cape. In Umtata, there was a break-in into my room, and only to find that that hotel only had its cameras at the reception and in the kitchen, and people broke into my room. They took all the electronic gadgets whilst I was asleep, they took my handbag and all other valuables. To date, nobody has been prosecuted. A case was opened. Until today, nobody has actually come back to me and say, we have closed this case because we have no evidence whatsoever. But now recently, with the killing of, of George Floyd, I live in North Devil, Chair. And living in North Devil, North Devil, I don't live in the upper North Devil. I live amongst the working class in that area, just as in Silverfields. I live in a standalone house. I am subscribed to a security company. And when there was this issue of George Floyd and about Black Lives Matter, one of the other people who reside in North Devil, a white person, actually went onto the chat group and was making a mockery of George Floyd. I responded. My daughter who lives with me also responded to say, but this is so wrong. This is a security chat group. You can't do these things. And they were all laughing. They were all making a mockery. And I was the first who responded. But guess what happened, Che? This man, a white man who I don't know, decided to go for my daughter, Katleo, telling her, I know you. I know where you live. I know you and your mother are staying alone. I will get you. I can come even now. And I'm saying this now during this period of the lockdown. And all these things were reported to the police. And precisely because of that, I can say, all those who want to deal with Nomvula find it difficult to confront me directly, but opt to go directly to those that they know they matter most in my life, my children, any parent. Any parent who gets attacked through his or her kids actually feels the severest pain compared to being directly attacked. Now, Chair, when I was in Silverfields, one of the things that happened was that one of the days we find our dog actually poisoned. Even then, 
no work was done. The SPCA took the dog and all those things. We don't know what has happened. Not once, Chair, but many a times, even during the apartheid days. I've never refused or failed to cooperate whenever there is an investigation against me. Even now, when the Commission arrived at home, I stayed away from them, also due to my own health conditions, but also because of the respect for the rule of law, and allowed the team to work. And in that, in that inspection, still, they continued to look for whatever that they were looking for, which unfortunately, the very witnesses that have made me to come here today are still fudging issues and confusing matters. But thanks to Mr. Nixon, who actually confirms that some of the things that are said here do not actually stand ground. I find it very concerning, Chair, that having been at pains to cooperate, a lot of sensation is created about my house, about my family, and what is found in my house, even with lots of inaccuracies, including a simple inaccuracy to say there are wooden stairs in my house. There are no wooden stairs. His assertion of describing my house inside, before you get to the kitchen, you pass a private lounge, which has got a, a door on the, on the right-hand side, and you have a dining room that has always been in use. But of course, it is Mr. Agrisis. <clears throat> Excuse me, Chair. It is Mr. Agrisi's intention to really rub in a perception that has been fed over time about the kind of person that they want to project to society against the person that I am. He claims to have been there when I was given cash, and I am contesting him, I'm challenging him. They also agree with his witnesses that there were instances that they, when they came to the house and they met there at the house in my absence, Knowing very well, Chair, that I'm actually a busy woman, and hence I was also given the name Mama Action. I'm always on the road for church reasons, for community issues, for my own family things, even traveling as far as Lesotho, because of the love I have for the people, not only that are of my immediate relatives, but also the people of South Africa. We made a choice, myself and my husband, Chair, that... Post 1994, he remained in the council, but later we reflected and said only one of us must stay in politics and the other one must opt out. He took care of the family, including most of the matters that have to do with the upkeeping of the home, as well as our safety when I moved to national cabinet. Throughout my term in Gauteng, security matters were a responsibility of the state. Even when the Sunday Times peddled the news before the commission said, my husband actually reported through an SMS to say, this is hogwash, this is rubbish. He is responsible. He knows what is happening. There are people that he pays for maintenance and all those things. I think it also undermines the men. Except with the RTPs. Unless Mr. Akrisi doesn't know. My, my husband is a proud African man, a very proud Musutu, very selfless, who has tried everything, Chair, even under these conditions, to build his own profile, including venturing into spaces that doors were shut, even though I was the minister, I was the MEC. He's tried to get into the business of scrap, getting scrap with ESCOM, and because of the evergreen projects in ESCOM, until today, my husband was fighting that case where his preference, including the application of the 30% quota, was ignored because there are evergreen projects in ESCOM and the issue of scrap was left for those that are better known within ESCOM. But he pursued, he tried, he did everything, and today I'm proud to say he took care of us. He would even find people that he could relate with who can actually come and support him and guide him on how to become a businessman compared to him having been, anyway, a secret intelligence operator of the African National Congress, including a member of Umkonto Wesizwe, a trade unionist and an activist of the community of Kahiso, Mansiville in South Africa. I find Mr. Akrisi's assertions chair 
very disrespectful, insensitive and undermining, maybe reflecting on his chauvinistic and the self-confessed racist character of the person of Mr. Akris. In my serving the NC, being the member of, I've seen various business organizations voluntarily coming forward to support ANC leaders and programs, including sponsoring campaigns and parties of, and parties of leaders of the ANC. This has not only happened during Comrade President Zuma's terms, but with all leaders starting with Comrade President Mandela up to now. I'm not sure if Mr. Agrizi says it was because of other ulterior motives that uh, we, we were working and Busasa was supporting and working with us in the African National Congress. What would he say of the taxi industry? To date, the taxi industry is not subsidized by the state, but the taxi industry has worked with us in the ANC using their cars as mobile billboards, ferrying voters, ferrying supporters of the ANC to rallies. A state-owned entity, National Chairperson, I beg your pardon, Chairperson, a state-owned entity, Telcom, was one of those who sponsored our national conference and many other businesses that are included here. And this has been something that has been done not only for the ANC, not only for me, not only for members of the ANC, but this has been part of the democratic operations here in this country where businesses had chosen to support those that they prefer would pursue their interests and would also help to reconstruct and rebuild this country. The support that was given <clears throat> and the relationship had no strings attached, and that is an assertion that Mr. Agrizi himself says, that at some point he got frustrated about this relationship. He himself and Mr. Nixon, one of the investigators, also confirms that there's never been a contract or a tender when I was the MEC for Environment, but I can proudly say my legacy and the legacy of the NC when I was appointed MEC for Agriculture, Conservation and Environment in Gauteng was to now have Maruping being a, a World Heritage Site. I moved to safety. I'm sorry I will say something. One of the things that we did was to activate communities. And one of the key campaigns that we mobilized communities, business against crime, everybody on, was a campaign against wanted criminals, and dealing with those that were harassing women and children in the streets and reclaiming the streets. One of those projects was co Operation Wanyatsozi. Pardon my, my language. But it was a demonstration of the extent of which communities were angry against crime. The second one, Chair, as we speak, here in Bramfontein, is Ikaya Letemb, where, working together with Telcom, they donated a building for victims of gender-based violence. I moved to housing. When I came in housing, there were only eight companies, white, well-established, stocks and stocks, that is now Stefanuti and, uh, and, and, and your, your other uh, big companies. They were the only eight that were established contractors. And the other upcoming were only male. Again, I went out and pursued the policy positions to bring women into the construction industry to empower young people into the construction industry. And this is how I have worked. So having Busasa here in Gauteng, having Busasa in South Africa, collaborating and supporting government initiatives and the African National Congress was not a foreign thing nor a secret thing. And that's why even Chair, as we speak, they did not only support campaigns or programs where I was involved. They've hosted regional conferences of the ANC of the West Rand. They've hosted provincial workshops. They've done research for the ANC in Gauteng for elections. And strangely, Mr. Agrizi's son was actually part of that work. He even took selfies showing off that he's working with the African National Congress here in Gauteng. And that has never been an issue. Nobody has ever frowned upon. And we all know, Esabazali, that our children must also find space to express themselves without the influence of Abazali. I wish and pray, Chair, that Mr. Agrisi, out of his own conscience, can refrain from using this commission in a manner that shows a sense of desperation and destruction of people's characters for motives better known by him. Sadly, Chair, dead man tells no story. 
Maybe this commission is deprived of hearing, not only from the late Mr. Kevin Watson, but also from my late son, Ritabusa, who went to his grave, having not been a, 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 a person who's, who's, who's addicted to drugs, and yet Agrizi refers to him, showing how he doesn't even know my kids. And as we speak now, my child who has a drug problem is trying by all means to survive. But they get chastised, they get humiliated, they get mocked, and they get actually hurt every time and again by what is happening about their own parents. And here, I can see Mr. Agrizi now, his new project with all those of, that are his handlers is on my daughter, Katleo. It can't be correct. It can't be allowed. It hurts. I so wish that Serge, Gavin, and Ritabusa would have been alive so that they can also come and tell their side of the story because he claims he knows him. Yes, my husband is a golfer, but my husband doesn't have a relationship with, with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with Akritsi, nor is my husband a racist. And the very fact that we've, we've been born, lived, and bringing our families in Kruger's up, it's one of the fractamte places. Two kilometers away from my place, you've got that monument where Ter Blanche used to go. I live with those communities. I have high respect for them. I do respect them. And I, I appreciate that if they hate you, they hate you. If they don't want any relationship with you, they don't have a relationship. But if they make friends, they are the best of parties. So I really think that he himself does not actually take also respect for individuals, both the dead and the living. I'm here, Chair, in conclusion, to respond to his continuous contradictions, the affidavits which I also think reflect an abuse of this commission for motives better known to him. The following are just my concerns, that my house has been put up for public knowledge and access, that rest has been mentioned more than once here, and there has also been those uh, Google uh, maps that uh, he has taken and has presented here before the house, for the record, Chair, I want to tell you, as we speak today in that house, I only live with two other women, myself, my daughter, and my little grandchild, Latita. Rather than me investing on the future of my grandchildren, I have to invest on my security. I have to invest on my safety. I have to invest on paying legal support because I don't know what the intentions are. But I'm here, Chair, because I believe that Mr. Agritzi must be proven to be the character that I've characterized here today. With crime being on the rise, with all the issues that are happening, I've said it, I've invested on, I have to invest on security, I have to take care of myself because I think there's deep hatred, hatred from the men and those that have actually advised him to go this route. I'm also concerned, Chair, about what is happening in the country on crimes against women and children, not only violent or physical abuse, but also misogyny. I think Mr. Agritzi hates women. He chose to pick myself and to do me any for what reason, I don't know. I've never worked in correctional services. I've never worked in the Department of Justice. I've never acted for any minister. He gives me the credit that he claims that I have influence on Comrade President Zuma. Chairperson, for the record, President Zuma signed a proclamation to investigate a department under my leadership without having even said anything to me, but it came out and there was, there was investigation. Even then, you can go and ask the law enforcement agencies. I've cooperated to an extent where I had to frog much officials who were refusing to cooperate with the SIU and everybody to come and cooperate because I do believe that where there's transgression, there must be accountability. I'm not sure why in all these supplementary affidavits, Mr. Agrizi fails to confirm that through Busasa, his own son, Giancarlo, rendered services to the ANC in Gauteng province and doing research. He took selfies, he posted, 
And they, even when they were doing all this thing, he would always put the ANC there. As to whether it was to protect Busasa, I do not know. But I do say, want to say to yourself, to your good self, Che, I am here because I have to put my own side of the story. And all these things that Akriti is saying about me, only him and his handlers, I don't think even his God allows him to do this. And hence, even last night, Che, we, slept, we went to bed early hours of today, working on all these documents that are similar to this, because I want to come, set the record straight, go out and continue with the life of looking after my own children now as a widow, make attempts to ensure that there's food on the table, serve the people of South Africa still, build this very ANC as we are doing even under lockdown, and make sure that there's peace and friendship in our country. Thank you very much, Chair. <coughs> Thank you very much, uh, uh, Ms. Mokonyan. Uh, I just want to mention, you did mention that you wished, uh, among others, that Mr. Gavin Watson was uh, around to be able to put his side of the story. Um, I've mentioned previously that um, before he passed on, uh, the commission had already been in touch with his lawyers in order to make arrangements to get an affidavit from him so that he could put his side of the story. But unfortunately, uh, he passed on before we could get that. So I just thought I would mention that. But um, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful you are here and uh, uh, you have already um, uh, made certain points about your side of the story. I think we'll take uh, the tea adjournment so that when we come back, then we can continue. Okay. We'll take the tea adjournment. The time is 25 past 11. We will resume at 22.12. We are adjourned. Thank you, Chair.